So let us look at uh, a sample question on back titration. Uh, it says that when four grams of a metal carbonate was dissolved in 160 centimeters cubic of one molar, remember this is one molar, and this capital M means that it is molarity, and uh, we have always said that molarity is moles per liter, hydrochloric acid, and the resultant solution. In this case now, the resultant solution, it is going to be the solution that is in excess, the solution that is in excess, diluted to one liter, one liter, then 25 centimeters cubic of this solution required 20.0 centimeters cubic of 0 0.1 molar, mm -hmm. 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution for complete neutralization. Then you are told calculate now part A, the number of moles per liter of excess hydrochloric acid that reacted with sodium hydroxide. Now, we already have got the information about sodium hydroxide. Now, with this information about sodium hydroxide, we can get the information for hydrochloric acid because if we write a balanced chemical uh, equation, that is NaOH in solution, then plus hydrochloric acid in solution, this one gives us sodium chloride in solution, and then of course plus H2O. Now that is a uh, liquid. This is a neutralization uh, reaction. Students should remember that when we were in Form 1, we said that when an acid and a base react to give us a salt and water, that kind of a reaction is called a neutralization reaction. Now remember, in this sodium hydroxide, we had been provided with 20 centimeters cubic of 0.1 capital M sodium hydroxide. Now that means that if 0 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide are contained in 1000 centimeters cubic, how many moles of sodium hydroxide are going to be contained now in 20 centimeters cubic. So that is going to be the same as now 20 now times 0 0.1 is equals to a thousand now times x. Divide by a thousand, divide by a thousand. Now this one becomes uh, x equals 0 0.002. Now, now it means that these are the moles of the sodium hydroxide. Now if we come here now and we determine the mole ratio, mm, mole ratio acid is to base. That one is 1 is to 1, meaning that if at all the moles of the base are 0 0.02, <coughs> it means that even those of the acid, they are going to be 0 0.002. Uh, but now the question is asking us, we find the number of moles per liter. Now these uh, uh, moles of the base they required or uh, they needed this 0 0.002 moles of the acid for them to be completely uh, neutralized. It means that these moles of the acid are contained in 25. But the question is asking us per liter. So if at all 0 0.002 
two molds are contained in 25 centimeters cubic how many moles are now going to be contained in 1000 centimeters cubic now this one is going to be 25 times x equals 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.02 times a thousand times a thousand now it means that x is equals to 0 0.002 times a thousand then divided by 25 and this one ends up giving us 0 0.8 now uh, 0 0.08 sorry 0 0.08 moles moles per liter 0 0.08 moles per liter and I said that if at all you are good in writing a capital M because moles per liter, mm, that kind of a concentration is referred to as molarity. You can as well write 0 0.08 moles. Uh, instead of moles per liter, you write a capital M. You write a capital M. And then moving on, moving on, we have the number of moles per liter, the number of moles per liter of the acid that reacted with the carbonate. Now, we have the uh, moles of the acid that were there initially. So, original moles of the acid, original moles, original moles of the acid, uh, we have one molar, that is 160 centimeters cubic of one molar HCl. So, it means if one uh, molar HCl, this one means that one mole of HCl is contained in a thousand. So we are asking ourselves how many moles are going to be contained in 160 centimeters cubic? X moles of the same hydrochloric acid and this one becomes 160 by x equals a thousand by one so x equals a thousand over 160 which is zero point uh, now this one uh, it is yeah there is a slight mistake this is 160 times 1 now is equals to a thousand times x and now this one becomes uh, 160 this one becomes 160 now but divided by a thousand 160 divided by 1000 which becomes 0 0.16 moles now out of these moles these are the moles that were there initially now if these are the moles that were there initially and uh, there are some moles that have been used to react with sodium hydroxide so for me to get the ones that reacted with the carbonate i will get the moles that were there originally and now out of these moles there are those that reacted with the carbonate and there are those that reacted with the sodium hydroxide those that reacted with the sodium hydroxide are 0 0.08 moles now i will subtract 0 0.08 moles and this one at the end of the day will give me 0 0.08 moles 0 0.08 moles now uh, moving on the number of moles of carbonate that reacted with the acid now here we have to write a balanced chemical equation that is the metal carbonate it is going to react with hydrochloric acid solution now this metal is valency 2 because carbonate is valency 2 and now here I have not seen any exchange of the valency so it means that if the carbonate is valency 2 and there is a metal 
and then we do not have any other number mm -hmm, that is coming in between the metal and the carbonate ion, it means that the metal is valency 2 and the carbonate is also valency 2. So this one gives me metal chloride in solution and then plus of course water liquid and then plus carbon 4 oxide gas now this one has to be balanced i balance by just putting a two there and then from there uh using what i know i can now be able to get what i actually do not know using the mole ratio now the mole ratio the mole ratio the mole ratio metal carbonate is to hydrochloric acid that mole ratio is 1 is to 2 and already the moles of the acid are 0 0.08 so I can get the moles of the metal carbonate that reacted with the acid just by taking a 2 times x which is equals to a 0 0.08 and then times a 1 and then x will be a 0 0.08 uh, times a 1 all that divided by 2 which is equivalent to a 0 0.04 moles those are the moles of the carbonate that reacted with the acid moving on we have the relative formula mass of the carbonate now finding the relative formula mass is the same as finding uh, finding the relative formula mass of a substance can as well be equal to finding the mass of one mole of that particular substance. So finding the mass of one mole of any given substance is the same as finding the relative formula mass of that substance and then you express it in grams. Now, the relative formula mass of the carbonate. Here, we remember very well that we used 4 grams of the metal carbonate. So, and those 4 grams contained 0 0.04 moles of the metal carbonate. It means that if at all 4 grams of the metal carbonate contain 0 0.04 moles, and we have said that finding the relative formula mass of a compound is the same as finding the mass of that particular compound in one mole. So now how many uh, grams of metal carbonate are going now to be contained in one mole? Uh, in one mole. Now this one shall give us 0 0.04 times x equals 4 times 1. That means that my x is going to be given by 4 times 1 or that divided by 0 0.04. Now this one shall give me 100. Students, it is important for you to note that when you are giving this 100, you should not give it in grams because we were finding the relative formula mass. And the relative formula mass, remember, this one is normally a ratio. And therefore, it does not have any SI unit. So the moment you are calculating relative formula mass of any particular compound, once you get it, don't be tempted to come here and write grams. No, it should be left just like that. Because relative formula mass normally does not contain any units, does not contain in a unit so we should leave our 100 to be like that just the way that it is and then from there we have the atomic mass of m now we know that the relative formula mass of mco3 is 100 now to get the uh, atomic mass of m it would be so easy because the atomic mass of M times, uh, not times, but plus the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, 
then plus the atomic mass of oxygen which is 16 but here I have three oxygen atoms so I have to multiply by three or that should be giving us a hundred so it means that the atomic mass of M plus 12 plus 48 is going to be a hundred that means that M plus 60 is going to be a hundred meaning that the value of M is a hundred minus 60 which is 40 so students you can be able to easily notice that this metal M eh, was calcium because calcium has got the atomic mass of 40 so using this calculation we are able to come up with that 40 and we can actually conclude that this metal M must have been calcium must have been calcium i hope you have understood continue following us for more